Okay, so this video I'm going to show you uh, night vision or infrared as it would be. I'm using a simple third person project here that I, I had set up uh, thermal vision, which is an, another tutorial. This one's actually more complicated, but I'm just going to use the same project so I can save my laptop the trouble of producing a uh, new project. So we could just kind of ignore all this stuff, and as you see, we're here. I have a post-process volume uh, that's just unbound here. And uh, let, let's get started. Oh, by the way, you don't have to use a post-process volume. You can use any of these settings in, for instance, a camera that's uh, attached to the character. But uh, this is just easier for me to to see in live while I'm, you know, running around here, check everything. So let's get started. This one is, uh, much simpler. So I'm going to create a... Uh, I'm going to call this infrared. This is, uh, just a new material here. Close, uh, the thermal stuff, sorry. I'm doing a double whammy today. Anyways, material domain, post process, uh, scene texture, awesome. I'm just going to use base color so I can tell it's working. Uh, set it in the post process, so I have post process material, material. Asset reference, it is selected. Ta da! Automatically working. Except that's weird. Anyways, so for night vision, I think I still have. You see, we kind of get this green. Uh, a lot of kind of blooming there. One of the things about thermal is it, it uh, uses infrared, hence why I call the material at. So you don't get a lot of shadows. Uh, during the day you would, but at night, you know, there's not really a lot of sun. Maybe there's a moon. But that's, uh, that's the only thing really casting. So I've, I'm going to use that kind of effect here. Uh, as you see already, the base color is basically strips all the shadows and lighting off it, which is good. But I kind of want to bring a little bit of that back. So I'm going to duplicate this. Bring in... You have to use post-process input zero. You cannot use scene color, by the way. But I'm going to mix these. So holding M, I create two multiplies. I'm going to use... 75% un, uh, unlit, and let's try 25% uh, lit. Holding A, click, does add. There's that. And finally to admission, and you'll see how that came out. Cool, so some of the lighting is coming back here. Some of the shadow. Which is good. Actually, I'm even going to go find my light source here. Try to that even further. Yeah. So you still have a little bit, and it, you could play with this value. You could also. Uh, if you wanted to make everything in terms of parameters, you could use alert instead, and then a scholar here. That's another way, that's another way to do it. But uh, this is gonna work for me. So now that I have this, it's just a matter of turning this black and white, which is plenty of ways to do it, but I'm just gonna use a component mask. Take my red. You could use anything here. In fact, I might actually want green. Or you could use a desaturate as well. Uh, 
This seems to work fairly well. Uh, your difference you're going to see here is it's based on the color of the material. So for instance, I happen to know that this uh, cone here is mostly red. So if I put it this instead, I see I'm getting a little bit brighter. So for this, you might actually want to use something like a desaturate. Which will hopefully give you a more natural at the cost of a few more instructions. Yeah, more flat look. That's fine. Next, looking at our reference here. I've seen a lot of contrast between the darks and the lights. So let's go ahead and uh, holding E and pressing gives us an exponent. Let's go ahead and uh, increase the contrast here too. Let's see what happens with that. Ooh, okay, way too much. Maybe 25? Yeah, uh, all right. Let's see if we can uh, boost the lights while reducing the darks. And I'm trying to think of a good way to do that. So I'm going to think about that while I continue on. Uh, to get the, the green color or whatever, I'm just going to take a, a green, basically and multiply this output by that. And you see I'm already getting this green here. And if this light source is darker, you see it's... Even if it's basically it's essentially off here, you still get something, you know? Which is really the whole point of uh, night vision. So it's good to see that that works. Go ahead and bring this to two. And really from here, uh, I just kind of want to tweak it, I guess. Get better values out of this. Let's try a. Uh, we have multiply. Ooh, I do. I just thought of something else I can do. So, but uh, let's see the effects this does for us. Yeah, much more solid. And to keep anything from being black, actually. I'm even going to add to this here. So essentially nothing is below 0.1, which is actually probably way too bright. Yeah. So this way nothing should be uh, black. Pretty good. Uh, for the rest, any other kind of camera effects you want to do with this, do as per per normal. Uh, for instance, you turn up chromatic aberration a little bit. You could definitely use a vignette. And you definitely want some of that noise. In fact, you have a basic kind of thermal vision look, huh? I 
thinking of how I, I could uh, separate the whites and boost them. But to be honest, I don't really have a great way of doing that right now. That's kind of cooler. What happens if we don't even clamp it? All right, let's see what that does. Not much of anything. Anyways, there you are. Night vision. <laughs> 